Hello folks, <laughs> welcome to 2020. <laughs> what year is it? I can't tell. This is the story of how I spent the last four days of the decade. I was very sick at the beginning of this video and on my period, and it was like a chunky period at that. So please excuse my complete lack of energy at the beginning, but I wanted to take you guys along on the journey as I get organized and I start planning and I get creatively inspired for the new year. I always just really enjoy the new year's spirit, as you can tell by this fucking ridiculous thing. It's all around my favorite holiday. You get to drink, you get to wear sparkly things, you get to work on improving yourself, and most importantly, you get an excuse to kiss somebody. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoy. Uh, this is kind of a new format that I haven't done before, hence this probably unnecessary intro. So without further ado, here is my New Year's video. Bye! Is this gonna work as a transition? Hello, <laughs> welcome to my video. Today I'm a mod. Uh, today I am on about day six of what has got to be the longest lasting flu slash cold super combo I have ever experienced. It's three days before the new year and it's my theory that my body's just trying to like purge out all of 2019 and like get rid of all of this bullshit before 2020 starts so I can have a clean break. Although probably in reality it's just my immune system shutting down after I pulled like three all-nighters to edit my room makeover. My body does this every so often when I like overwork myself a little too hard. Um, my body just vibe checks me and is like, no, no, no. So first on my New Year's agenda was resting up and getting some creative inspiration, which is just a really pretentious way of describing Netflix and chilling for an entire day. For real though, I am constantly trying to teach myself that it is okay to take time off. I think we all feel this social obligation to look busy all the fucking time, when in reality our brains all need some mush time to feel refreshed, and honestly I feel like some of my best ideas come out from the times when I'm like in the shower, laying in bed, watching a movie, not thinking about anything in particular. Here is my guide to the ultimate Netflix and chill setup. We've got some snacks, of course. I always need something to eat because I have like a slight oral fixation. So I just like want something to do with my mouth while I watch Netflix. Um, and unfortunately, your girl does not want to get any boys infected right now. I have some lemon ginger tea also for by sore throat, which I'm not making any better by talking to the camera, but you do what you gotta do. I have a pillow stack optimized for lumbar support. I have my laptop, of course, equipped with a charger so that I don't run out of battery, and my ex's HBO password from his coworker from like four years ago. Shout out to Jeffrey. Thank you for not kicking me off your account yet and letting me watch Game of Thrones for free. And last but not least, I have my weighted blanket. I started using weighted blankets like three years ago when I was in a long distance relationship and also like very lonely my sophomore year of college. So a weighted blanket was like the closest thing that I had to imitating human contact, which was a little bit of a, yeah, that was just like kind of a depressing part in my life that I don't talk about that much. Um, anyways, I'm gonna watch some movies now. So here is a very quick review of everything I watched. First off, John Mulaney and the Sack Lunch Bunch. You can go very far in life if you pretend to know what you're doing. A lot of people in TV thrive that way. Name names. I would take a Lego to the foot for John Mulaney. He is literally so precious, and I love how his comedy is dark but endearing and edgy without being like racist or sexist, which, uh, believe it or not, white male comedians, it actually is possible. Next, I rewatched La La Land for like the fourth time. This movie is 100% Hollywood jerking off Hollywood, but I watch it whenever I want to get reflective about my film school days. It's weird. The things you do when you're broken up with. And to my shame, I did watch All of You season two. This show is pure, unadulterated soap opera trash, but it is like my favorite type of trash. <laughs> I don't know, it's just like pure entertainment and sometimes you just wanna watch something fun. I always forget this, but every time I watch movies, I really do get this like burst of inspiration. Uh, so much so that I actually cracked open my old college screenplay that night for the first time since I graduated college. So yeah, we'll see where that takes me. If nothing else, I could just use some practice writing. Housewifey Ashley, activate. Do do do, wow. I love my husband and my kids and cleaning things. So the next day, I hauled my still very sniffly ass out of bed to deep clean my apartment. 
Now, as any of my college roommates could tell you, I am not a particularly clean person by nature. And it is not because I don't want to be, it's because I get like so deep into editing that I just completely neglect all other household responsibilities. But I am slowly learning that my physical space absolutely affects my mindset and having a messy apartment subconsciously adds this extra layer of stress, which uh, I really don't need. <laughs> so I made sure everything was in its place for the new year. Okay, is it just me or is this part of your sink just impossible to keep clean? I swear we clean this like every week and every week it's disgusting all over again. Down in your heart. So something that is equally if not more important than clearing out my physical space is clearing out my digital space. So as you guys can probably guess, I accrue a lot of data between videos, photos, all the foot fetish porn I have saved on my computer. That was a joke. Don't save porn kids, just stream it. I feel like oftentimes people don't think of digital clutter as real clutter because it is, you know, contained within your computer. But I think that digital clutter and having all these files and photos that you never actually use can be just as distracting in kind of your digital workspace as physical clutter in your physical workspace, if that makes sense. So here I'm sorting through all of my files in my documents folder, on my desktop, in my Final Cut Pro library, and in the deep dark abyss of my downloads folder, which is very full of like songs and various memes that I download for videos and also foot fetish porn. Okay, no, I'm not gonna make that joke again. <clears throat> anything I absolutely don't need is going in the trash and anything I might wanna reference over the next few years, AKA like most of my vlog footage and bigger video projects goes on an external hard drive. I'm using a Samsung solid state drive, which is a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> this is the only external drive I've found that doesn't like spontaneously corrupt every six months. Uh, it is expensive, but it is very reliable. And there we go, a nice fresh desktop for the new year. Next, it was time to clear out some space on my phone, which was getting a little bit full as well. This is actually the first time I've managed to avoid dropping my phone in the toilet long enough to actually fill up the storage. So uh, we love character development. The vast majority of my storage is taken up by photos, so I'm just going through those and deleting anything that's like a duplicate, which is kind of most of my photos. I think this has to be the cringiest pic I took in 2019. <laughs> this is awful. Okay, actually just kidding. I have to keep that photo. It's too ridiculous. <laughs> I used to get really anxious deleting photos of myself because I just get scared doing something that's irreversible. But I think the more I've grown up, the more I've realized that the things that actually matter are not me having like 500 selfies of myself in the same fucking pose. The ones that really matter are ones with my friends or even, you know, random photos like this, where I bought a plant and I put a little seatbelt around it. I don't know, stuff like that that actually means something other than just here's me trying to look pretty really, really hard. Oh, hey, I didn't see it there. <laughs> yes, I am wearing my New Year's stuff because I bought it for a video a couple weeks ago and I spent like 15 bucks on it and I want to get my money's worth. So for my final step of New Year's preparations, I'm going to plan out my bullet journal. Now I started bullet journaling a couple months ago and I actually have really been loving it. Not to sound like a basic bitch, but I have used a lot of different planner methods in my life. I've tried passion planners, I've tried to-do lists, I've tried sticky notes, I've tried hourly planners. And for some reason, this is just the planning method that sticks with me the most. So I thought I would walk you guys through my bullet journal setup. I have changed a couple of things since I originally set up my bullet journal a couple months ago. Um, as I've kind of been figuring out what works for me. So a couple months ago, I already went ahead and made a yearly calendar page, which it turns out I fucked up because I forgot that 2020 is a leap year. So all of my dates past February are wrong, but that is an issue for March, Ashley, to figure out. On the other side, I have a year in videos page, which has a line for every Thursday of the year so I can plan out what videos I'm making next. And I figured it would be really satisfying at the end of the year to look back at all of the work that I've done. Alrighty, let's get started on 2020. On the first page, I wrote down some reminders for what I want to prioritize this year. Now, of course, I have some more tangible career goals, but here I wanted to focus on my mindset and mental health stuff because I feel like that's really what I struggle with the most and what I actually need a reminder of. So here are, I suppose, my 2020 resolutions. Stop giving so many shits about what people think. I feel like if I'm not careful, I will just like run my life in fear of other people not liking me. And that is like no way to exist because you really can't please everybody. So you might as well just do whatever the fuck you want. Put your health and happiness first. 
Not in like an aggressively selfish way, but in like a I want to take better care of myself way. Make time for projects that matter. Sometimes I feel like I'm running on this hamster wheel of week to week videos and meaningful work takes way more than a week. Feel genuinely confident again. I feel like my confidence peaked senior year of high school and ever since I've just been having one fat identity crisis. Make New York feel like home. I think that comes in terms of getting to know the city, but also having a little family of friends that feels like home there. And put yourself out there socially. I definitely have a tendency to isolate myself because I get scared that people won't like me as much as I like them, but this year I'm gonna try to get over that. On the opposite page, I left space for my favorite memories of the year. Sometimes it like really freaks me out how little of my life I actually remember. So here I wanted space for just like a phrase or a sentence that reminds me of some of the sweet little memories that I have this year. Next, I'm writing out a monthly calendar. Now, most people I think make theirs twice as big as mine and they take up two pages, but I like to keep mine small because it's easier to draw and I don't have like a whole lot of monthly deadlines or travel, so I don't really need that much space anyway. Underneath, I have a small section for monthly goals and projects. In my case, these are mostly longer term videos that will take a couple weeks to edit. The next page, I'm going horizontal for my monthly trackers. I label a Y axis from one to 31 for the days of the month and the X axis one through 10, where I will plot my hours of sleep, my mood and my level of anxiety. I've been doing a mood tracker for two months now, and I feel like it's been helpful in reflecting on like what actually makes me happy and what makes me anxious. And sometimes it hasn't been exactly what I expect. Like oftentimes me sitting down editing for an entire day actually makes me quite happy, even though it sounds like it wouldn't make me happy. And I've also noticed that the days when I'm hanging out with close friends are like my top days. Those are always my favorite days of the month. And below that, I have a spending tracker since I like to keep myself accountable for the money that I spend. And it's been encouraging me to save like five to $10 on a day-to-day -day basis, which can really add up. All right, my final type of page is my daily page, which I kind of have a unique format, but it works really well for me. So on the top left, I write out top tasks and then leave space for the five most important tasks of the day. I often expect myself to do like 600 things in one day and then get disappointed when I can't do all 600. So this is my reminder that like realistically, I can get five things done in a day. Below that, I have a penting section for errands and lower priority tasks. And then on the right, I have a schedule that goes from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. where I can write out meetings or calls or deadlines and stuff like that. So here I am just continuing filling out my daily pages until my hand is about ready to give out. After I finish all my daily pages, I'm going back and bookmarking the start of my month with a bit of washi tape so that I can reference it easily. And here is the final flip through. Even though bullet journaling looks really tedious, something about it like awakens the middle schooler in me and I just get like really excited to fill out my pages and get organized and make everything look cute. So with all my planning and preparation out of the way, all that's left to do is celebrate. Am I still a little bit sick? Yes. Is my immune system definitely not going to benefit by drinking alcohol this evening? Also yes. Am I gonna get blasted anyways? Say it with me folks. Yes, she is. Thank you for enabling my terrible life decisions one view at a time. I was considering staying in tonight, but I literally have not had human contact in I think like a week and a half and I am going fucking crazy. I spent Christmas alone and I spent Thanksgiving alone. So, you know, we're going one for three here, baby. Anyways, as you might be able to tell, my face is a little bit puffy right now and just like full of a lot more acne than usual, which I will not apologize for because 2020 is the year of not apologizing for how I look. Anyways, my face looks like this because I had myself a good old New Year's cry last night. <laughs> And this is gonna maybe sound like depressing to people, but genuinely like sometimes I think my body just like builds up sadness and like anger. So every six months or so I'll get real nostalgic and start going through my camera roll and watching old videos and like listening to sad songs that I listened to in middle school when I was like an emo 13 year old. And I will just like cry and <laughs> throw myself like the biggest pity party ever, which I don't know, maybe that sounds pathetic, but um, I don't know if you guys share the same perspective, but like, I don't view crying as something that's bad. I view crying as something that like, you need to cleanse it out of your system every so often. I sound so motherfucking crazy right now. Something about last night too, like I was on my period, I'm moving out of this apartment soon. I was getting really, really reflective about the entire year. I feel like I had a lot of pent up sadness from this year and um, now it's all out of my system and I'm feeling, feeling a lot better about myself. God, I sound so insane. Like sometimes I think about the fact that I feel like day to day we go about our lives with such like a narrow range of feelings and thoughts that we can actually express to other people. This is gonna sound like so Fight Club, but you know, like if you're working in a professional environment, talking to your family or your friends, 
I feel like deep down people are like angry and sad and fucking horny just like all the time but we don't get a chance to express it to anybody because then I think like society would slowly crumble. Occasionally it's just like good to get your fucking like id out and to just be like ah. Maybe what I'm saying is I do need to start a fight club. That's my theory on it. I feel like if you let that stuff simmer for too long you'll just like implode so it's better to get it out in like small kind of depressing doses. I would rather have an existential crisis every single year than have one big one when I'm 45 and I suddenly hate my husband and my kids and everything my life has come to. So honestly, I'm not doing too bad. Um, I have had a lot of time by myself to reflect and to think about the year that's gone past and how I want this next year to be different and this next decade to be different. In retrospect, I think 2019 has been a big year in terms of hitting milestones for me. I graduated college, I hit a million subscribers, I hit two million subscribers, and those are all milestones that since I was a kid, well, maybe not the YouTube milestones, but the kind of career college milestones are the ones that I have dreamt of achieving ever since I was a little kid. I really am proud of myself for everything I've been able to achieve up until this point. And I want to thank you guys for helping me along this journey as well. Or not even helping me, you guys fucking made this journey for me. I always thought that those milestones would define who I was. And I always thought those milestones would be the thing that made me happy. And once I had them, then I would just like achieve nirvana. I don't know, there wouldn't be any other problem in my life like once I had my own apartment and once I had a job and once I had moved out from my parents. and. Oh honey, that was not true. I also think that I procrastinated doing a lot of work on myself in terms of like my own happiness and mental stability and just like being a good person because I have just been so one-sided in terms of my own quote-unquote success. This is like literally the most like motivational cat poster thing I could ever say. But in 2020, I really want to learn how to love myself. And I think in the past, my love for myself has been very conditional. It's depended on my grades or my achievements or which college I got into or how many subscribers I had or what views I was hitting. And um, I feel like I have been beating myself up for literally like my entire life. And I just want to stop making my life so fucking hard for myself. And I really just like want to let it all go and just be fucking happy with myself for once, which is a harder task than it sounds, but um, we'll see. Bye bitch, I'm not gonna miss you. Here's my outfit. Now let's go make 2020 our little bitch. <laughs> I'll see you guys next year. Bye. Or next decade, should I say. Haha, uh -huh. nobody's thought of that joke before, have they? Happy New Year's, guys. Bye.